Hello everyone, welcome back to this part 4, hopefully the last part of this tutorial series on making low poly art using any images. Um, in this video we're gonna solely focus on export options, how we can export the result that we have here into something that's usable, uh, something that you can maybe use for your own projects or just want to post on Instagram or your social media. So that will be the goal of this video. Um, we have, I think, two options that we can explore. The first one is very simple and is actually uh, doable within seconds. It's actually a command built into Rhino. Uh, now you notice I'm using Rhino 6. Uh, for those of you still run of 5, um, I think you have a different option, but I think the overall command is the same and it's called view to capture file. You can also have view to capture clipboard, which just copies to your clipboard, but um, I usually just I'll put it directly to a file. So if you enable this option, you will get this window, which specify um, which view you're exporting. We're exporting at the top view, so that's fine. You don't want the grid because uh, who would want a grid anyway? You don't want the world axis um, because we're using scaling, you really want to turn it off unless you want to have uh, the world axis on every uh, sort of like grid-like pattern. So basically you want to turn all these off, especially transparent back background. It might look very um, something that you might want, especially if you want to make PNGs and stuff like that. But I will highly uh, recommend you turn that off and just export it to a JPEG or a PNG and then just crop it out the background. It's not that hard and it gives you way better results. Uh, if you put resolution, I would say keep it the same because the most important option we'll be interested in is actually the scale. Now I've set a standard to 5 and that will give me basically a high resolution output. What this means is basically 5 times the width and the height. That's it. So example, if you put it to 1, you will see that the corresponding um, resolution are the same to the width and the height. So leave it to 5 or higher if you're trying to print it on a very, very big high resolution poster. Uh, usually 5 is, is high enough for all your needs. So with that said, just click OK. It will ask you where do you want to save it. Um, I'm just going to save it here. And you just call it tests uh, output. There we go. And then it's saved. So if I bring up my saved output, which is this one, if you can zoom in, and I don't believe this is 100% yet, I think this is 100%. So as you can see, it's quite high res. So if you want even more resolution than this, you can of course increase the, um, uh, the scale. Uh, you can now bring this picture, this PNG uh, JPEG in to your favorite editing software like Photoshop or Affinity Photo or paint and then edit that way. Okay, the next and second method is actually going to be a bit more intensive computational wise. So be prepared to uh, save your file and prepare yourself for some crashes. Uh, basically what we're going to do is going to use Elefront to uh, create hatches for us and bake that hatch so that each face is going to be a solid filled hatch. Um, from my uh, research and understanding is that that's the only way that you can export um, factor in SVG with the hatches as filled colors. Otherwise you only get like line colors which does not really help a lot if you want to post edit this in Illustrator or any other factor based programs. So with that out of the way, let's begin by setting up our definition. We will need the bake command.
command, of course. Uh, we will also need a attribute to define the color. Let's define. Let's define object attributes. And the C is going to be our color. Probably this one won't take that long. Okay, we don't really need the rest unless you have a specific layer and want to bake it to. Then you can um, create that layer and then put a panel here and then plug that in here. For the rest, we can leave it as blank. Oh, uh, maybe one thing is let's try to keep everything flattened just to make it easier and to make sure that we don't make mistakes because if we connect the wrong one, it could take a, a while before we can edit it. So bake, that's bake. Uh, big name, we don't want to find name, the up, the attributes go to the A. Now the fun part is the hatch itself. Um, in order to create a hatch, we need the defined hatch component. Uh, a very, uh, actually what I highly recommend is before you go any further, apply a value list, this one to the pattern. We don't need these two because this is scale and rotate of the hatch. Since it's a solid, it doesn't really apply. Um, apply a value list to the P. And if you get no data, now you see here I get solid, uh, which basically means a solid hatch. So, but if you don't get anything from this, what I highly recommend you to do is go to your Rhino document, just create something a close shape and type in hatch select the solid hatch just click ok what this does is sometimes your rhino documents uh, I'm not sure why it will not have a hatch library built and this component reads into that library and if it doesn't sense anything it will error out and if you don't fix this first and you connect the C, you're going to have to wait twice as long because then you have to connect it, fix it, connect it again, and then wait an, an, uh, a very long time again. But you don't want that. So you want to fix this first before you continue any further. That's a very, that's like a very important step that you should really do um, before you connect these two together. Uh, now that we have this set up, we can actually go in here and connect this the hatch to the geometry because that's the one we want to bake. This step is relatively easy. Um, so the question remains, how can we turn these uh, meshes into uh, curves? Well, there's a very handy component called the face boundary. And what this does, it will extract the faces from a mesh and create and draw the boundary of it and then return to us closed poly curves, uh, poly lines. So let's do that. Uh, um, remember that we flattened this part, so we need, so we want to do the same here. Uh, I think if you flatten this part, we still get, I think we still get, uh, trees on top so we have to flatten this part just to be sure so then we know that this is always flattened as you can see if i the preview line uh before i plug that one in i'm just gonna hide everything except i'll leave it there for now until the hatching is complete just to be sure because i know this this process will take a long time so uh, i'm gonna plug this in and i'm gonna it's probably going to take a while, so I will pause the video there and then come back when it's done. So here we go. And we're back. So that took 1.1 minute, 93% load of the whole script that we have built so far. This is by far the heaviest step uh, of the whole process. Actually, I forgot one important thing to do. Hmm. Well, uh, that's okay. I was gonna make uh, put a data dam here, 
which is data dam. What this does is whatever data comes in, it gets buffered until uh, never or a certain seconds until you click um, update and then the data gets sent to the next component. You can plug that in there, but mm, I think the safest solution will be only enable this or this whole part when you actually need it. So, uh, okay, let's get to the results. We will hide our mesh, hide that. We can safely delete this now. We hide that, we hide this, and then we activate. This is all our hatches with a color filled in. You can export this now, and select them all and export it as SVG to a different component. So what I'm going to do is select all this and export this to here. Uh, we're just going to select SVG in the data. Let's just call it test SV, test SVG export. Safe. Um, because we're doing factor, this doesn't really matter <laughs> what size we do it in, but just to give a input, I'm gonna just do a four, and then I'm gonna do extend, so that extends to the whole page, and click OK, and that's is our uh, export. And if you open your Illustrator. I don't have Illustrator, but I do have Affinity Designer, so that's what I'm going to use to preview the SVG. Close that. Um, you can just open this also with, uh, you can open the test. I'm going to drag and drop my SVG in it. And there you go. Each individual face that can be recolored, uh, applied, whatever adjustment you want. So I'm going to take all that, group it first, and then I'm going to, let's see. So for example, you can apply adjustment layers. We can do, I think levels should apply for all of this. But there's going to be quite a heavy uh, calm. Yeah, prime this levels a bit. I think I want like this should work. And then we can also apply visual effects uh, if that is also needed. Inner glow, outer glow, Gaussian blur. You can actually bring back the blur in it. It's quite funny <laughs> that you can actually do that. Um, we're not going to do that here, but you can just, as you can see, you can play around this uh, very nicely. But then we can also do uh, HSL. So what I'm going to do, bring down the, and then you get something like this. And there you have it. You can go crazy with it. Apply crops, masks, anything you like. Or even do weird stuff with the color. It will totally recolor this. Up to you. And that concludes our tutorial of making low poly art from any images that you have. So if you want to do it from a different image, all you need to do is uh, make sure you disable this, of course. Uh, load in your custom image or second image, adjust the resolution here. Uh, maybe put the mesh size to 50 first. Delete not these components, but all the, the geometries in these layers so they can start afresh. And the rest you can probably just leave it as is. And then you'll get your next low poly image out probably within a minute or two depending on how long you're going to be spending on defining the features. So that's about it.
I hope you've learned a lot in this tutorial series and I hope to see you again in my next tutorial. Until then, take care and have a good one.